Well, hello, this is Dr. Norman Thomas, and welcome to tonight's edition of Power Talk. I'm glad you joined us tonight, and we'll be right back. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. What does this mean? It means that God desires to pull the best out of you. And faith is the only way to extract your potential. Faith empowers you to do the impossible, to do what would never be possible without God's divine assistance with you. Faith expands one's capacity to believe. See, without faith, there are things that you can't even think, thoughts that you can't even entertain. But once faith enters into your heart, believing God's word, you're empowered to see like you've never seen before. Faith says, I'll never quit. Faith says, I'll never bow to failure. It says, as many times as necessary, I will arise and do it again. Welcome back to tonight's Power Talk. We're going to have a good time tonight. We have a really good subject matter that I think will be helpful to you as you're giving thought to crossing from this year over to next year. This is a good time. This is a great time for you to refocus, press reset, just get refreshed in the things that you believe God has, has put before you to do. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. I want to encourage you that as we uh, move forward into the new year, set yourself where your giving is concerned. Set your heart to give and to help us spread the gospel around the world. We're really looking forward to getting back into the nations. I truly miss the nations very, very much. But we're still working in the nations. We're just doing a lot of it digitally or virtually. But there, the time will come when everything gets settled and, and everything is safe again to travel. We'll be get headed back to the nations. But what God has done during these times, he's helped us to really focus on the need right here at home. And so your giving helps us to do both 
to help us spread the gospel abroad and to help us give right here at home. I want to thank you so much for your dedication and your consistency in the tithe and in your offerings. They really, really have been a blessing to New Life Church International and to Norman Thomas Ministries as well. Tonight, I want to agree with you that as you give, that your seed, your finances, your gift is a blessing, and it is blessed. And it's blessed to empower you to receive the hundredfold, thousand times more harvest of the seed you sow. We believe that there's no such thing as sowing a seed without you experiencing the benefit of the harvest. That's what the Bible teaches, and that's what we believe. And so I stand in agreement with you right now for that. In Jesus' name, amen. As you set yourself to give, take a look at these announcements. Dreaming is one of the most important things that you can do in your life. You were actually born for it. You were designed by God to dream because it engages the imagination. God gave you that imagination so that you could literally see what he says. God has big, big plans for you. He's got big things that he desires for you to do. But nothing can come to you except it first comes through you. So don't let anything and don't let anybody stop you from dreaming. Dream big and dream big on purpose. See, giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word give to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE. As we come into the new year, there are so many things I'm sure that's going through your mind in terms of things that you can do, things that you didn't get done in this previous year, in the, in the year that we're in now, things that you want to set your heart for to do in the upcoming year. Maybe some new things. I love new things, you know, things afresh, things that are new that you can embark upon. Maybe it's some new disciplines even, some things that you know that you want to do that, that's, that's needful to do, and you're going to set your heart to get those done. Well, if you stick with us on Sundays, we're talking about how to set your heart to get those things done. But tonight I want to deal with something that I'm, I'm phrasing as the needful thing. Now, I want to go to the scripture where I got this from. It's in the book of Luke. And let's see, let's see, let's go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, and we're just going to read a few scriptures together, okay? And then we're going to talk about this whole concept of the needful thing. Because there's a lot of things we want to do, but then there are things we need to do. And let's look at how important that is. So in the book of St. Luke chapter 10 and verse 38, it says, now it came to pass that as they went, that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much with much serve. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the, the amplified translation of this, okay? The, the classic amplified translation. I'm going to pick that up at verse 40 because it kind of just breaks some of this old English down into regular, regular talk. <laughs> In verse 40 it says, But Martha, overly occupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me to lend a hand and to do her part along with me. But the Lord replied to her by saying, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. 
there is need of only one. So see how Mary, I mean Martha, was preoccupied with doing many things, but he's saying while many things you're doing, there's only one thing that is needful or a few things that are needful. Mary has chosen the good portion, that which is to her advantage, which shall not be taken away from her. So basically, Jesus was distinguishing between things we want to do, things that we feel are necessary, and things that are actually truly necessary. You know, there's a running list of things in your mind and on your, on your, on your to-do list and on mine as well that we believe and we think are very, very necessary. But then, if you really go back and assess that list from a truly spiritual perspective, you'll find that perhaps there's only a few of those things on that list that are truly needful. What is that which we want or desire and that which we actually need? So today, tonight, actually, as we're sitting here in the auditorium of New Life Church International Live, what I want to encourage you to do tonight is to think about the needful things. And I want you to, to apply uh, the pressure or the discipline of, of diligence to that which is needful. So we're going to talk about the needful thing, but we're also going to talk about that discipline of diligence. So I have in my notes that diligence is a very powerful spiritual force, a very powerful spiritual force, and it determines your outcomes in life, whether you're diligent in a thing are not diligent in anything. All through the Bible, the scriptures uh, uh, continuously convey that that makes a difference in the outcomes that you experience in your life. Whether we're talking about your diligence in a relationship, your diligence in your finances, your diligence even in your own health, uh, your diligence in your career or your profession, whether or not you operate in diligence has a lot to do with the outcomes in that particular arena of life. I have here that it, it also determines how developed we become. So we mature, we grow, we grow up, whether at the rate of our, uh, uh, at the rate of the diligence that we apply to these particular areas of life. So most people never realize their dreams because they quit too soon. See, void of diligence, you'll quit. You'll just, you'll just quit. Because diligence is that ingredient that says, I am going to stick this out because it is the right thing for me to do. It is the thing that is necessary. It is the needful thing. And because I have recognized it, as the needful thing, I'm going to stick this out until the end. And then those are the people that experience breakthrough. Those are the ones that experience victory when they apply diligence. So the major categories uh, of contention to your diligence will be time, pressure, and distraction. Time, pressure, and distraction. What do I mean by that? Well, for some people, they give up on their diligence because it takes too long for a thing to manifest. So they're like, oh, I'm tired. Uh, I, I can't wait. I can't keep believing for this. I can't keep pressing. For I can't keep walking by faith for this particular thing. So they just, they, they give up. The, the pressure. The pressure is adversity. The pressure is the circumstances that pound against you en route to your dream. And then I, the other thing I have here is distraction. Distraction is all the noise and all the busyness that is in between you and your end goal. All the, the voices and, and the, the temptation to go this way or that way, that's distraction. And so what you want to do is make sure that you are focused on the needful thing this year, all needful things this year, and set yourself 
Just set yourself with focus to pursue those things. Now, I have a definition that diligence is defined as persistent effort in one direction. Persistent effort, and it is meticulous uh, attention to detail. Now, when you combine those things together, you have this spiritual force that we call diligence. And so there are things right now, if you just simply think about it, that God has put in your heart to do that are needful for you to do, not necessarily comfortable for you to do, not even necessarily uh, something that you just can't wait to get to, but it is a needful thing in your life. Now, let's go back to the story that I read to you about Jesus uh, being invited into uh, Mary, uh, Martha's home, and, and Mary was there, also the sisters. And so notice what Martha was doing. What was she doing? She was making the house ready for the guest, who is Jesus. I mean, wouldn't you be the same way? I mean, you think about it. Jesus is coming to your house. What? Okay, well, okay this is major, right? And so you're going to do everything in your power to make sure the house is clean, the house is, is nice, and the preparations for, for whatever beverage and whatever food that you're going to put, all of that is set in order. And Martha set out to do it, but she didn't complete it prior to Jesus' arrival. So when Jesus showed up, I can see Mary, she just took off her apron. She thought, the man here now, what, what are you going to do? So she took her apron off, and she invited him in, seated him, and she sat too. Now, she didn't just sit just to sit and to just to have a conversation. She sat to receive the purpose for which they invited him. And the purpose for which they invited him was for the importation of the word. They wanted the word. And so Mary's like, well, it's, it's showtime. Uh, uh, it, that's really not a good choice of words, but it's time now for Jesus to teach. And so why would we be busy with anything else other than receiving the word that Jesus had come to give? But Martha was concerned that perhaps it wouldn't look so good to just not finish the preparations that they had in mind for Jesus to make sure everything was perfect and finalized before they would actually serve him. So she filed her complaint with Jesus against her own sister. And Jesus just basically told her, Martha, you're overly, I, I love the way the Amplified Bible puts it. He says, you are overly occupied and too busy. Now that's what this list of things that you want to do can create in you. It will make you overly occupied in 2021 and it'll make you too busy in 2021. Notice, Mary knew that all these other things were necessary to a degree, but the most necessary thing was for her to receive the word that Jesus came to give. She sat down and received, and Jesus referred to her action as such. And uh, he said, uh, he says, you're overly occupied, and um, well, I lost my place here. But the Lord replied to her, Martha, Martha, you are, you are anxious and troubled about many things. There it is. Anxious and troubled about many things. So the Bible says that Martha was overly occupied, too busy. And then Jesus said, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. So Notice what being overly occupied will cause in your life, anxiety and trouble in your mind. And so the needful thing is one, and Mary has chosen the good portion. So would you do this? Would you simply do an assessment of what you've decided that you want to get accomplished in your new year? And make sure that the things you have decided to get accomplished in the new year are the needful things, not just things. 
but the needful things. Now, you can have a list of other things, but don't forfeit uh, the needful things for these other things that are not as needful or not needful at all. Now, what we're getting to is to what's important for your development and what's important for your growth in the next year. You see, the needful thing for you will cause you to grow past, past your point of current growth this year. If you will give attention to the needful things in your life, then you will grow past the point that you are right now. In other words, when we're sitting down at Power Talk this time next year, you won't be at the same place you are right now. Why? Because you have given due diligence to the attention of needful things in your life. And I, when I say needful things now, I'm not just talking about praying longer or reading the Bible more. You know, you can read more Bible, but if you don't meditate the word, that's like Martha and Mary. In that scenario, Martha would be reading the whole Bible, but Mary would be meditating maybe two chapters or two verses. You see the difference? It's like, sure, reading the Bible is a good thing, but if you read and neglect to meditate for the purpose of growth and development, you're, you've become too busy and overly occupied, and now you have created your own anxiety about getting finished reading the Bible when that is not necessary at all. The needful thing is to get the word in your heart, not just in your head, but to get it in your heart. And the way you're going to get it in your heart, in your system, and in your consciousness is to meditate that word by the way, these notes are available to you. I keep forgetting to tell you that. If you go to our website at nlcinternational.org and you click on media, go down to the bottom of that window and you'll find study notes and you can download these notes for yourself and you can look at them, follow along with us here tonight. And you can use them during the week for meditation. When you deal with the needful things in your life, they will empower you to endure. In other words, you just won't quit. In the Bible, in Philippians 3.14, the Bible says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize. This is Paul testifying about his walk and about his journey and about his assignment in life. He says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize. How do you know when you haven't quit? And the answer is when you are in pursuit of what is before you. Now, it's important to have the right thing before you. So within the context of our study tonight, we want to make sure the right thing that is before us is the needful thing that is related to your assignment. So let me just bring it really all the way down to, to a, practical, a practical base. Let's put practicality into this. Let's say one of my goals for 2021 is to buy a new car. Okay, great. But now, I can buy a new car and have a new car, but I'm not dealing with and I'm not giving attention to my purpose in, the, in life and my purpose for being on this earth. It could be that my new car is inside of that. And it could come, quite frankly, without a whole lot of debt and a whole lot of toil. If I first pursue the purpose for which I'm here, and the assignment that is at hand for me to do. You see, my point is, is that many times we're pursuing things that are not needful, and you might need a new car, but you may not. But we're pursuing things that are not needful and neglecting the needful thing when the things we just simply want are inside of our pursuit of the needful thing. And so this is another reason 
that we want to make sure that we search our hearts as we set goals for 2021. We can set goals that appease our flesh, that makes us happy, that brings temporary uh, satisfaction. But after the newness wears off, then we're back to where we were in the sense of unfulfillment and so forth. But if we will set our hearts, God, help me this year to go after the needful things. I'm, uh, listen, I'm a firm believer that when we talk to God and we ask him for certain things regarding our lives and regarding strategies and, and wisdom, he is going to answer. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God in, in the book of James, let him ask of God who gives liberally, who gives freely without any judgment whatsoever. So when you're asking God for this wisdom that I'm, I'm encouraging you to go and ask him for, he's going to reveal this to you. So what I'm saying is, is when you pray and you say, Lord, I thank you that my life is in your hands, that you have strategically designed my life to fulfill your purposes and plans for me. So help me uh, see and help me discern for 2021 the needful things in my life that are necessary to move me closer to your will for my life and to bring me closer to the fulfillment of those plans and purposes. And I guarantee you that God, as you rest, not fretful, but as you rest in him, he'll begin to reveal to you the things that you need to focus on in the upcoming year. And it may be a little different than that list you just created in the last few days or a few weeks for the next coming year. God wants to perfect your life. He wants to perfect your presence on this earth. And if you will yield and ask for the wisdom, he will give you that wisdom and he will give you that list of things that you should be focused on. And, and to your surprise, some of the things that you thought you had to pursue as a goal is inside of the very things that God has declared needful for you to do in your life. Now, I can't tell you what that list is. As, as much as I would like to give you all kinds of examples of some needful things that maybe God's talking to you about, I can't tell you that. But he will tell you that. And it's so easy for you to ask him and rest. That's the other thing. When you ask God, you, you rest so that the answer can flow to you. If you ask and fret, now you're not asking in faith and nothing's going to come to you but confusion. But you ask and rest. And what that looks like is simply this. You ask and you say, thank you, Lord, for that revelation. And I receive that revelation every single day of my life this year. And every day you just wake up and say, Lord, I thank you for the revelation of the needful things in my life. What is it that you want me to do? What changes is it that you desire for me to make? What perspectives do you desire me to have? What is, what is it that you want from me and you want of me? And let that be my pursuit this year. Sounds like Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God, and then all these other things will be added unto you. Many times when I teach this particular passage in Luke with Mary and Martha, I, I like to joke and say, you nobody asked, Jesus didn't come there asking for, for lunch, right? It was, it, was, it was Martha's idea. And so because Martha created this idea, she created her own stress, she created her own anxiety. Nobody asked for that. You know, they just invited. I'm sure a lot of it was customary and in tradition, you know, and so forth. But the point is, Mary was very smart about it. She like, okay, we got some stuff for you, but you got some stuff for us. And I'm just going to take a seat and hear what you got to say. She started with the right stuff, the needful thing, which for her at that moment was the word of God. So, Quitting is not always obvious. When a person decides to quit because they're not focused on the needful thing, it's not, an all, it's not always an obvious act. Quitting is not always obvious. Sometimes it's represented by the lack of focus and the lack of diligence 
in the task at hand. When you start just losing your consistency in that particular area, you, you're really backing off of something. Now, some of you have probably done that even in 2020. And of course, you know, we've had major disruption in 2020. But let me tell you something. Even in the light of, the, of pandemics and, and, and such, when you set your heart to get something done that God has, has put in your heart and you have attached yourself to that and agreed to that, there's not much that can move that out of you. It's in your heart. It's, it's, it's within you. And so you're going to bring that thing forth one way or another during that time. And there's not going to be an adversity that is going to prevent that from coming forth. The first place where diligence loses its grips, its grip is in your mind. That is the first place of detachment. It's when you start fainting right here. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 and 3, you start fainting in the mind and when you start fainting and becoming weary in your mind, it's only a matter of time that that becomes an actual uh, manifestation in the flesh. Now, one of the things you want to do is make sure that you don't give in to distraction. Distraction is major, major, major. I, I wrote a book called The Power of Focus. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, and in that book, I talk about the power that distraction has against a man's or woman's focus. The Bible says in Philippians 1:28, it says, do not for one moment be frightened, do not be intimidated in anything by your opponent or by your adversary. If you'll just stay constant and fearless, that will be a clear sign to them of their, depend, uh, their impending destruction. I'll just stop right there. You see, that, that uh, activity of the enemy to distract you can come in the form of fear. It can come in the form of intimidation. It's all designed to get you off of the very thing that God has raised as a needful thing in your life. Now, this is not hard because God has been speaking to some of you all year long about some things that he needs you to do. And you already know what they are. I'm asking you to elevate those things because, because they can't do anything but be helpful to all of us in terms of the body of Christ and the kingdom of God. And, and quite frankly, some people, I believe, are waiting. Their lives are at stake or their destinies are at stake because that there's something that, you, that you'll be doing in that needful thing that will make a contribution to their, to their identity or to their purpose. So we're, we're all interconnected. And so when God assigns you to do something, it's because he needs part of what you're doing to be deposited into someone else so they can be inspired or stirred in a sense to do what it is that they were created to do. Uh, so I, I, I just don't want you to think that you are independent uh, on an island unto yourself and that what you do affects only you. No, it affects us all. And so God has created us that way to that so that what I do has an impact on what others do, has an impact on what, on what others do. And so don't be frightened, don't be intimidated, but stay constant and stay fearless. I say one of the most subtle and effective attacks of the enemy against your destiny is distraction. And sometimes distractions are misinterpreted as busyness. Sometimes people just think they're busy and, 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 and busy is not always good. Busy can be bad if it removes you from the needful thing. Again, go back to Martha, go back to Mary, and Martha was busy doing good and noble things, but it was preventing her from accessing the needful thing in her life. But Mary, on the other hand, sat down and received the needful thing in her life. So never confuse being busy 
with being productive. So God, uh, the enemy, in trying to intimidate you, in trying to plant the seed of fear in you, he'll use anything or he'll use anyone as a tool of distraction against you. Whoever and whatever is willing, <laughs> the enemy will use to, as a, uh, to use as a tool to get you off course or to get your attention elsewhere to where you're not focused on the needful thing for 2021. In Hebrews 12 and 2, it says, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, looking away from all that will distract, looking to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher, bringing, to, bringing it to maturity and perfection. So, in other words, keep the word of God before you, that as you endeavor to live a disciplined, a disciplined life of diligence, a disciplined life of a focus on the needful things of your life this year, then look to the word to, to keep escorting you in that direction. Look to uh, Jesus to keep escorting you in that direction. And keep looking to the wisdom of God. Keep calling on the wisdom of God to lead you and to escort you in that direction. Now, I will just say this. The needful thing could range from, from very spiritual things to very practical things. The needful things always, in my assessment, starts practically and ends up at high levels of spirituality. So it may be a practical thing that we start, but it has high spiritual implications. And so don't, don't, think that if God tells you to, for example, uh, practice uh, uh, eating more healthy food, eating more vegetables, don't think that that is something small. Don't think that that is something irrelevant and that's not God. No, it could very well be God trying to get you to a place of high spiritual uh, position. You see, we just think, some people think, not we, but a lot of people think that uh, God don't deal in practical instruction. Oh, yes, he does. Because you can't handle the spiritual if you can't handle the practical. And so many times God will give us these practical steps that we need to take in order to expand us so that we're able to embrace the spiritual outcomes that they produce. So don't ever think small of very practical things that God may speak to you. So I just don't want no one to get confused that when I say the needful thing, I'm talking about, oh, I got to fast, you know, once a month, every month for 2021, or I have to pray 72 hours straight for seven times in the year. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, yes, if, it, if he says that I need you to pray more this year, that's a needful thing for you. Now, what that looks like is between you and God. If he says you need to study my word more this year, then that's a needful thing for you. And what it looks like is between you and God. But don't let nobody put a formula on it. Don't let God structure that for you. Let him design that plan for you. And in, when he does it, it won't be hard. It won't be uh, a strain or a stress to try to walk, walk it out. It'll be, it'll be E, I call it E-F-G, easy, fun, and good. And that's what you want. So Satan uses intimidation to plant seeds of fear in us. He, uh, this intimidation is always classified uh, as a, possible threat. That's all intimidation is, uh, a threat. It, intimidation is a threat to do something. It's not actually the act. It's, an, it's, it's a threat to act. It's a threat to do something. And there's nothing real or factual or concrete about an intimidation. 
It's a mind game that he plays against you to back you down into average existence and a state of normalcy. So what am I saying? When the enemy comes at you because you, because it, it's going to happen. As soon as you take what I'm telling you and say, okay, I am going to identify the needful things in my life for 2021. I'm just not going to make just a random, just natural list of things to accomplish. I'm going to take that list. I'm going to make sure it is presented to the Lord and that it comes out with needful, the, the needful things that need to happen in my life, the, the needful changes that need to occur, the needful transformation that needs to occur within you. Maybe God needs you to think differently about money. Maybe God needs you to think differently about the upkeep of your home. Maybe God needs you to think differently about friendship and about who really is your friend and who is it that is not necessarily your friend and what friendship really is all about. It's just, it's just it could be an array of things. And I'm just throwing some examples out there, but I don't want to give you anything to say, oh, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. No, you go to God, lay it before him, and he will tell you. It's not hard. You go to him and say, God, Reveal to me, I'm asking you to reveal to me the needful things in my life. Just like you, you, you showed us that Mary attended to that which was needful. Martha was just doing a lot of busy stuff. I don't want to spend 2021 just doing a lot of busy things. I want to do the important things. I want to do the needful things because that is going to catapult me closer to my destiny. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this time and perhaps we'll do some more of this next week as we're getting ready and prepping for our next series where you'll be hearing more about that. But until then, this is Dr. Norman Thomas saying thank you for joining and keep walking by faith. Dreaming is one of the most important things that you can do in your life. You were actually born for it. You were designed by God to dream because it engages the imagination. God gave you that imagination so that you could literally see what he says. God has big, big plans for you. He's got big things that he desires for you to do. But nothing can come to you except it first comes through you. So don't let anything and don't let anybody stop you from dreaming. Dream big and dream big on purpose. See, giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word give to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE.